Hello, everybody. This is Corey, New World Witchery. You know that you're watching the channel. Um, so uh, we've got kind of a fun special episode today. Uh, we've got somebody who, um, if you've been a listener to the, the show for a long time, you actually know this person because they've actually been on the show before, right? Yeah. Yes. So, so this is this is not this is not the first time they will have heard your voice, um, and hopefully they have encountered your channel because we talk about your channel. Um, usually, whenever I do kind of these in person uh, things, it's oftentimes because uh, you have said something, and I'm like, I need to do I need to do a video on that. So, um, so I'm really really grateful to uh, have Athena Beth here on our channel. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about mundane magical objects, the things that are hidden in plain sight um, that uh, not everybody's going to know are magical, but you know, because you are the witchy person. So you know the stuff's there. And I should say, Athena Beth, uh, one, welcome. Glad to have you here. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. Thank you for reaching out with this idea. I love it. <laughs> I'm, ex I'm excited. This has been fun. And, um, and I say this has been fun because we've actually already had about half of this conversation um, which is hap which happened over on Athena Beth's channel. So um, if you want to hear the first half of this conversation uh, about some magical objects, including um, things like playing cards and some other things, um, then pop over to Athena Beth's channel. I'm going to have a link in the description. So you can, you can head over that way and check out that first half of that conversation as well. Uh, Athena Beth, so glad to have you here. Uh, always a delight to interact with you. You're, you're one of the folks that actually has my, my phone number and we text uh, and, and yeah. <laughs> communicate that way. Um, uh, or whether we're, uh, we got to meet up last year and hang out and uh, do some witchy shop hopping, things like that. That um, was so fun. And I loved was... all those shops, even the creepy one. <laughs> that was... <laughs> and I know we've talked about that on previous videos, so people can go back and see about that. Yes. Uh, yeah. yeah, and it's funny that you said the, what you did just a moment ago about you'll see a video and that will inspire you to do something or make a video or talk about it. And that's exactly the effect that your podcast has always had on me. Literally, when I'm listening to podcasts, I, you know, I, I have visions of me when I'm driving to work, I'm listening to your podcast and you guys say something, I'm like, oh, and I have to do a voice text and I'm like, do a video about, you know, it, it, mm -hmm. it really helps spark my interest in ideas so it's sort of a mutual <laughs> mutual that's, thing there so thank you the best way for it to work i think i mean i don't you know uh, i don't like the sort of um master student guru type systems i love yeah. these kind of organic um conversational <laughs> ways that yeah. that we can learn from from each other because that's exactly. honestly how i've learned the best is is by um, either either finding amazing books and being really, really glad of that, or bumping into people who have something they want to share, but are also um, not setting themselves up on a pedestal. And oftentimes they want to learn something that I might know about. And that's just, it's yeah. great. So this has been a good, um, it's been a really good kind of dialogue between us over the years, so. Yeah, thank you. So one of the things we were, well, what we were doing today is, as you had already, as Corey already said, is we're going to be showing some mundane type items that look like nothing special, but that actually hold a very magical place in our lives. I think I was going to start off and one of the ones I wanted to share, and I say one, it's a one topic, but it's a lot of different things, jewelry. And I did put out a video recently about, um, crystals and different things you can do with that and jewelry. It doesn't have to be crystals, but I would say um, like, for instance, today was a day I was really excited about our conversation, but I was also very nervous. I am one of those, I, I don't know if there's a word for it, but like a phone phobe. I don't like to talk on the phone. I mean, at least this way is it's more like personable, but because of that, I I had to wear, you know, I, I wear my mother's ring and I'll, yeah, both of them, <laughs> her black, the black one, uh, you know, makes me think of power. And then again, my mother was very, not like she was eloquent, you know, she wasn't Elizabethan, whatever, uh, <laughs> Shakespearean scholar person, but she didn't do what I'm doing and pussyfoot around the topic, as <laughs> she would have said. She got to the point, she, there were no, there was no mincing words. She was kind but she was firm and so when I need to do that and try to you know reel in all of my tended tangential conversation <laughs> side conversations I always tend to have I will wear her her ring it, it just 
if I'm in a meeting and I'm in a stressful environment, I fiddle with it a lot and look at it. And, you know, I don't know. It just, it, it has a magical feeling to me because I have imbued it with, this is her, you know, this is part of her and now it's part of me. And when I need to channel the part of me that has her, you know, I'm, I'm 50% her, although I feel like I took after my dad a lot more. I'm going to just I give you um, a funny little thing my sister and I say about this. And even my cousin, um, we all look at my mom as this badass, <laughs> pardon my French. And we're always like, inner, uh, channel your inner Pat. Her name was Pat. You know, channel your inner Pat. And if you're afraid to say something, start to channel that. And it helps if I'm, if I'm wearing this, uh, if I have, I even have some, it's getting really old now, but I have like some for lipstick that I've hardly ever worn, but I have it, you know, and I don't want to use it much because it, you know, when people use lipstick for a long time, it, it kind of forms their lip. I don't know if you've ever <laughs> noticed that. And <laughs> So, but I have been known to wear them at a time or two. I'm sorry. He hears something. So jewelry, her ring, I've worn this little pendant thing since the very beginning. This was, it's a little triple moon with a moonstone in the middle. Um, it doesn't, I don't feel like it looks super witchy, but I mean, on the back, you can, I know it's hard to see where you are, but on the back, it's hundred percent got a pentacle. <laughs> and these are just some things that if I don't wear this, I feel naked. I hate going out of the house and realizing I don't have it. And because I, I didn't realize how much during the day I do kind of hold on to it and right. rub my finger on the back of it. So I'm very tactile, obviously, or kinesthetic, whatever the word is. I like to fiddle. <laughs> if I'm sure. So I guess those, that uh, genre will be my first, my first well, item. <laughs> And so I'm, cur I'm curious, like, so you mentioned the idea of like touching it and, and all that. And obviously, like, there's some magic to that. Have you ever tried to develop like any specific rituals around it? Like, you you know, turning the ring three times and like whispering your mother's name and like that specifically brings not. in the magic? I like that, though. I have not. I will say right here in this cabinet, this is my little behind these doors is my ancestor altar to her. And mm -hmm. so there are times I will put things in there and almost like how you would put it out under the moon to let it charge. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I will, and I need to do that again, but there, I have a big amethyst bed in there. That's her birthstone. And it, I can put that, put my things on that and just leave it with her for a while. And then I feel like she, you know, her energy, you know, I don't know. I feel like it's, it's charged up with some more mom juice. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's beautiful. I love that. Yeah. Thank I um, I actually used to do uh, wire wrapping for, gemstone jewelry and stuff like that and that was always really interesting but I do like the idea of um of like just having and this is something Lane talks about like she's got you know a little ring that it looks like it's just kind of a star but mm -hmm. for her it's a pentagram right um and like it's so these these pieces of jewelry that no one else is going to necessarily know have these these pieces of significance but I don't mm -hmm. know I just I love I love that idea of like just a little something that you can turn or move or twist um yeah gives you that little boost so yeah it's it, it's sort of like a worry stone but yeah. i my worry stones aren't usually readily available if i'm not gonna mm -hmm. like reach down my shirt in the middle of a meeting or something mm -hmm. but <laughs> i like them near my heart but sure but yeah it's i mean it look it's it's very fidgety but again it serves a purpose it does bring it does soothe me so yeah. it, it serves its purpose but Absolutely. Yeah, I like that. I like that gemstone wrapping stuff. I thought, uh, yeah, actually I tried it with this here and yeah, it, this is yeah. like a, this is a tiger oh, iron. Totally. Depending on how much stuff you see around my neck, you're like, Ooh, you're in for a day, aren't you? <laughs> you're like, I'm ready. <laughs> Love it. You're, sort of, you're sort of Jillian from um, Practical Magic and you're like, where's my tiger's eye? Where's my tiger's eye? <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. I get that. A yeah. lot of people would be like, that's so dumb. I'm like, uh-uh. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah like she you, didn't you, have you, it and you saw yeah. what happened yeah exactly no yeah she had it there you go um uh yeah that's really great uh okay right. so my uh, my object is uh something that i keep in my wallet and so this is maybe less of a sort of hidden in plain sight thing um, but it's one of those things that like i think if people saw it kind of coming out of your wallet it would seem a little weird but it wouldn't necessarily be the kind of thing where they're like uh you know like art are you a witch? They're just going to yeah. be sort of like, what the weird thing to keep in your wallet. Um, and that is a little bay leaf. Um, and so 
I keep the the bay leaf kind of in there, especially um, I keep it near money and business cards um, because bay leaf uh, it has uh, the significance of bringing success uh, and victory is kind of what we're thinking of, but it can be also prosperity. Um, uh, because they used to, you know, crown the victors of, um, you know, foot races and things like that with these laurel bay leaf crowns uh, in ancient Rome. Um, and so that has that long-term significance. And then it's also one of those herbs that like I cook with all the time. Uh, like my mom sort of put bay leaf, there'd always be a bay leaf in the spaghetti sauce or bay leaf in the stew or something like that. So it has a little bit of that personal significance to it as well. Um, and it, you know, it can also be uh, at least slightly protective uh, as well, just because it's sharp and pointy. <laughs> so oh, it yeah. kind of stabs It'll the hurt head. if you if you yeah. eat the bay leaf. You're like, ow! Yeah, yeah. and you can yeah. see this one's kind of gotten a it's you know gotten a little crackly over the years, and it, it's just little pieces of it have fallen off. So it's probably due for another one. And every once in a while, I'll even you know draw something on it. Um, this one doesn't have anything, but uh, you know. Uh, as I try to renew them, um, I try to renew them about once a year. Sometimes I forget, um, mm -hmm. but but I try to keep keep them uh, as up to date as possible. Yeah, and so that's you know again, it's one of those things. If it falls out of your wallet, no one's gonna you know absolutely lose their mind over it. Um, yeah. But at the same time, like uh, it, it it is a little weirder than some of the other ones I've done. So, yeah. well, it's more comfortable than trying to wear it in your shoe. Because I've heard of yes. that too, and that'll hurt your foot. <laughs> yeah, so. yeah, you have to kind of put it under the actual um, insole to, to do it in your yeah. shoe. So. Yeah. What do you do with your old leaves when they crumble? Do you toss them or burn them, or what do you do? So, with them? so I have a, an annual. I actually have two days of the year that I can burn spell ingredients, um, and that is uh, Hallows and um, well, Pergus Noct. So those are the two kind of. Okay witchy holidays where I can, uh, I'll take out, you know, if I have old candle ingredients or if I have, uh, you know, old spell ingredients, if I have old, uh, and I know that you, you actually did a really good video recently on the sort of like, don't throw away your candle scraps, make new candles. Um, but you so, know what, I, yeah. I wish I had said, I w I'm glad you brought that up because I wish I had mentioned if it was a spell candle that I'd actually been using for a certain working, like, mm -hmm. especially if it failed, I don't know if I would hold on to that. You know, sure. mine were more atmospheric. Like, again, the protection candle one, again, I, I felt okay with using that one again. But, like, I have mm -hmm. some other spell candles that I haven't, I'm not necessarily going to repurpose because maybe, I know I had one for, like, healing of, you can't heal people's cancer as far as I know I haven't found the spell but I tried really hard and didn't work <laughs> but um I still have that one and it's just sort of in a dark cabinet and I don't really know what I want to do with it and mm -hmm. I always felt like if I melted that one down and reused it it's kind of a bad luck candle because it didn't work you know mm. but I didn't throw it away either so I wish I'd thought to say that in that video just to kind of copy right. that like don't mix all your <laughs> you know if you have a some kind of Right. Get, you got your, get your, out of here, candle burning. You don't want to reuse that. A, a, yeah, cursing candle mixing with your sort of like general prosperity. That's with my love. Well, exactly. So, yeah. Actually, I was curious with your candle one, and this is a little off topic, but it's it, it but but it is. It made me. I was thinking about this because you you know you kind of had to dig it out of the the tin. Have you ever tried the double boiler method to to melt the wax? I haven't. I haven't tried that um, for that. No, but that's a good idea. I should try that next time. Yeah. The freezing usually works pretty well, but you know, mm -hmm. sometimes it doesn't. Like the, the second one I had included on there, like the next day I threw that little footage in, it popped right out easy. But yeah. So I think we had one more. Like I was going to share one more and I have a couple here to choose from. I don't know. I guess I'll use the one that is more common. So similar to just be just uh, before similar to the jewelry thing I was talking about. Um, I have a little vial of perfume. I don't even know what kind it is. It probably was in a box at one point and said, I don't, I'm not a perfume wearer as a rule, mm -hmm. but this was a gift from the other person I talk about all the time. So I talk about you guys. And then the other person I talk about is Ember. Honey, Honey Raven. <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh. And if you haven't found her yet, you got to check her out. You will be like, she's the bomb.com. But she has, she's a very giving person. And over the years of our friendship, she has sent me a few different boxes of just, I think her love language is gifts. You know, she gives a lot of things. And in one of them was this perfume. And 
again, I don't even know the name of it. But when I need to fill my badassery, if mom isn't enough, if I need some some witchy stank, I, or good smells actually, I, I will use this. And I will usually spray it as cheesy as it sounds on my star. So <laughs> hello puppy. My dog loves it very much. But yeah, I will I will spritz that and like it's almost like anointing it with um liquid courage or something what is that Feliz Navidad I don't remember what it was called <laughs> just kidding but um yeah so I, I like scents is what I'm saying I will use you lately it's been that in in the past it might be a little thing I put together and I'll spritz it in my hair you know and so that it's you know being careful of what it is I, I remember learning from you guys how when you're maybe preparing your child before they go off to school or something you might have like a dot of crown of success and just sort of like mm, let me just fix your hair over here and and just I let I get it's another reminder through the day and it's another kind of um protection yet channeling um an energy you know mm-hmm. of success basically anyway that's that was the other I think that was the other item I was going to share today there's so many it was kind of hard to decide yeah well I'm glad that you did the perfume perfume is one of those things that I've seen used a lot in a lot of different um, magical practices and traditions and so like for example in in both voodoo and hoodoo um they have uh certain perfumes that get so so in voodoo uh, they they um the erzilis or erzulis um oftentimes have perfumes that are associated with them um that are offered to them and things like that whereas in hoodoo like you have things like hoyt's cologne or florida water these specific scents that are used in particular workings or particular spells Um, so, and you know, that's the, that's for those systems, but there are a lot of perfumes that you can use that have these botanical notes to them that have really specific significances and smell is really good for triggering memory and triggering, um, sort of mental processes and stimulation and stuff like that. So I I think perfume is, is, or cologne, you know, whatever people are wearing, um, it's such a great way to get that in there. Uh, Mm -hmm. honestly, a lot of times, um, I won't even burn incense. Um, if I'm doing certain kind of workings, I'll, I'll actually get a spray and I'll do uh, a spray just to sort of fill the air with that scent um, without mm-hmm. necessarily doing the incense uh, for it, especially when you do something very quick. So it's, it's a yeah. good way to do that. I had some smokeless smudge, some spray. Mm-hmm. So that's another, that makes me think of that. If you can't or you can't burn incense or sage or whatever for any reason, it's it's a nice way to take it with you and still be able to get like everything you just said <laughs> about scent um, and bring it with you and not offend anyone or hurt anyone's asthma or just whatever it is, allergies. So, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. You do have to be careful if you're going to, if you're, if you're loading up on magic before you get an, an enclosed airplane <laughs> or an elevator, that could be a little, <laughs> a little dodgy, but, but yeah, a little yeah. bit, you know, in an open air environment, you're probably okay. So. I worked with a lady who, um, I think she had a lot of woo in her. We never really connected too much, but she, you could smell her coming. She loved the patchouli and you would smell it a good 10 minutes before she got to it. You're like, wow, how are you? you know? yep. so. Moonflower has entered the building. All right. Yes, yeah. it is. Moonflower. That's awesome. Yeah, nice. Well, cool. Um, Athena, but thank you so much for sharing these these objects, these pieces of your your magical life uh, with me, with us. Um, thanks for doing this collab with me. This was a lot of fun. I really enjoyed this, and I hope we can do something like this again in the future. So. Definitely. I, it was fun. Thank you so much for asking and for recording and helping make this happen. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Uh, and again, uh, please go check out Athena Best's channel. If you're on our channel, you probably know Athena Best's channel, but if you don't, head over there, check it out. Um, whole bunch of videos there, lots of great stuff, doing 30 Days of Magic uh, right now. So uh, a lot of videos uh, coming out, lots of magic um, uh, to talk about. So um, head over there, check out Athena Beth. Uh, and uh, you can also catch the other half of this video too. So uh, again, thanks so much for being here. Thanks everybody to, to, for, for, for watching and uh, be well.